Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 13. Lucky number 13. My name is Keith. This is Doug. Doug, how is episode number 13 finding you, my friend? It's finding me tired. <laughs> Very yeah. tired. Yeah, we had a long day yesterday. It's finding me good, though. Um, weather's kind of cool this weekend, but it's uh, been really good. We had a really good convention uh, yesterday, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but uh, lots to talk about. Yep, that's that's why we're tired, and that's going to be the main yeah. topic today. We're not going to do a nerd news. We will make up for it next week. Don't worry. Uh, a lot of it is just there's so much to talk about with the experience that we had, uh, and that's that's going to be our main topic. So we're just, we're going to jump into it. Uh, Doug, give us the primer while I set up the screen share and we share our experience. Uh, first, let's talk about what did we do yesterday? How many years have we been doing this? Why do we do it? Who's affiliated? Where it's at? launch us while i get a setup here <laughs> we'll start with that yeah definitely so uh three years ago you uh, approached me i believe and your brother approached me with old timer games it's o-l-e-t-y-m-e-r he's got a kind of funny uh, spelling about it you know uh trying to be hip there uh <laughs> so three years ago we started off at the como retro convention uh done by a high schooler and uh, i believe you have his name uh, Sumner is his Sumner name. Sumner Henry. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. You. I knew the last name. So Sumner Henry uh, went to his parents, you know, and said, "Hey, I want to get this gaming convention together." So three years ago, he started it. Um, it's been growing ever since, you know. Got some celebrities and some panels going now. He's got tournaments. Uh, so this being the third year, we've learned not from our mistakes, but we learned how to make us better, you know. Uh, we've had four people behind the booth uh, that we're seeing now on the screen. Um, that's very, very tight corners. You know, a couple of us run the register. Brian is the man that owns Old Timer Games. He is the wheeler dealer. He needs to be talking to all the people. And uh, we had Jeff a year ago, two years ago. We kind of missed him this year. Um, we did get to see him. That was cool. But uh, we had a lot more room to uh, go around and uh, make the deals, pull the merchandise, and talk to people. It was we a really did. good time. We did. Good setup. Uh, and as he stated, we've had Brian on the episode before. This is his private collection. He does now sell at a, uh, I believe it's an antique mall called Midway uh, here in Missouri, right off of I-70 on the way to Kansas City. Yep. Uh, lots of foot traffic there. He's been doing very, very well throughout the years. And it was kind of nice this year that when people ask, hey, do you have something in inventory? He would be able to double check and see if, you know, whether or not there was something in, you know, the inventory that we had there or if it was over at Midway. And we can send people over to like a storefront, so to speak. Uh, but he has so much content uh, in the first picture we're opening up. This is we got I think we got set up in record time and we had time to actually chill and take pictures. And what you see in that photo here, we normally had to sneak past each other and single file turn sideways and go back and forth this time we had like double that space and we had so much more room and you'll see why it was beneficial here in a little bit when we had some visitors in our booth yeah, uh, but it, it was so much better this year the booth setup oh. was so much better he did great job on this layout i just have to give him huge credit for that yeah i think uh you know the saying is third time's a charm uh, the third event for us seemed really good uh, we had good flow, back and forth movement. Uh, we were able to engage. You know, I don't know if I got some photos in the heat of the moment, but uh, looking at this photo now, there was at least 10, 15 uh, people all along the outside looking at all these games, all this merch. You can see the controllers, the uh, no box games there on the corner, yep. all the consoles and systems in the back. So having this bigger space definitely this year helped us out a lot. Yeah, and I don't think I got any photos of when we were in high tide, a lot of people, because we were busy hustling, trying busy, to busy, yeah. take money and answer questions. Um, and what's, you know, I, I will say I did do a walkthrough. We stepped away for a bit. So you can get a sense of the groups of people that were there. Uh, a lot of these first pictures that we have here are right at the very beginning when it was chill. Uh, so I want to call out something that really set Brian's booth apart that surprised both me and yes. Doug. He has a, he got a shrink wrap machine because of his uh, midway that he has out in that antique mall area, his booth that he has, that he goes year round. He's now selling inventory, moving inventory yearly. And so to keep things organized, this was a game changer. I mean, look at the controllers, all of the wires. If it's a wired, it's with it. 
Yep. And it's 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 combined. And then check out that shelf. <laughs> Look at those consoles. Amazing. Yeah. You know, the thing that uh, caught my attention, we were loading the vehicle up uh, before the convention is looking at these, all the controllers. He threw in a game on some of them, some extra mm-hmm. accessories like memory cards and expansion packs. All of it is just there together. I know last year we had a lot of trouble of, hey, we've got this console, but I got to find the power cord for you. All right, I got to find you. And they were in boxes. We were digging through boxes while the customer waited. This was what I would call a win-win. And let me explain why. Not only did it help us in selling, like Doug said, we didn't have to waste the customer's time by digging through boxes, matching, you know, power cords. And he, for the most part, he had them bundled before, but we were still searching for him or we had him in all these different cardboard boxes. And we're like, Oh, Doug, where's the Nintendo yeah. Nintendo 64 box that matches this. We didn't have to do any of that. So that's number one. It helped us. Number two, it helped the customer because they didn't have to wait. But number three, everything is all together in one bundle. And we like, there are many times, Doug, I know like somebody would want to take a look. Cause this was behind us. We would invite them behind the booth yeah. or we'd hand it to them and you could just, you'd hand it to them and they were able to actually inspect it and look at it, look for, you know, How's the the body of it? You know, Brian was able to write on each one of them if he had replaced any lasers on them, brand new, that kind of thing. So this was a game changer on the console. And he sold a lot of consoles. He did. And I think uh, that aspect of being able to visually inspect it and look at it helped him a lot. You know, uh, we're looking at, and I think it's, uh, what's the name of the purple uh, N64? I, I can't think of it, but yeah. He's going to kill us for not remembering this. Uh, I don't I'd remember. I'd say plum crazy, but that's a, a Dodge Charger. <laughs> it's a Dodge so, Charger. It's a special. Um, it's, it's definitely it a special one. It's like a but cosmic. But the lady looked at it and uh, she said, oh, that looks amazing. You know, I've always wanted one of these. And she got it in her hand. She was able to look at it and she said, oh, I've got to have that. So that visual appeal of everything's there. I think he had a purple controller with it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely a marketing tool. So good job, Brian and old timer games for that. Yeah. It, it went really quick. I tried to Google it, but all, all, all I had, I'm not finding it. <laughs> I know he's going to, he's going to fillet us, uh, after he hears the podcast, like, I've told you, this is what it is. Uh, all I see out there is a, they call it grape purple. Fantastic. I think that's what it is. It's a oh, fantastic. Think, maybe yeah, grape. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank I you. eBay. So. Whew. Brian's but, gonna uh, play the us. lady, um, <laughs> she said she's looking for one. Brian had yeah. one, and uh, yeah. So you look at this Super Nintendo, by far <clears throat> the best console ever. I'm mm-hmm. just gonna say that uh, it had a good. great bundle: uh, two controllers, Super Mario World, and an immaculate uh, console. You're talking a system that's over 20 years old, and that thing looks perfect. Yeah. Um, you always see the yellowing of the consoles. Brian has cleaned these up. He's made sure they are fully functional. Yep. And then, of course, having that additional game in there is uh, quite the attention grabber it, as well. And he makes sure everything is functional. Yeah. And yeah. what I will say, he he, what I like about working in his booth, we are always busy. Oh, and I can't yeah. say that's always the case for every booth. I don't want to knock anybody because there were some amazing vendors there that had wonderful inventory, super mm-hmm. great people. But I will say, when you do a walkthrough, Brian does price his things to sell. And he's not like a, it's not his primary job. He doesn't have, you know, he doesn't have like a real storefront with a lot of overhead. So he's able to price these things to sell. And that keeps our booth really busy. A good example that Nintendo Doug was talking about, uh, you probably can't see it. The label he has on is a hundred bucks. Now this can vary depending on condition, that sort of thing. But there were some that were of similar condition, if not worse, that I saw inside of there. And they were asking 200, 250. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. and, and that just, it varies. Of course, there's a lot of reasons for that, um, but I, it always keeps our booth busy, man. He always has a great selection and it's fun to work his booth just because the day really does go by pretty quick. Yeah. You know, not to give away his secrets of pricing, but uh, I had several customers or people come back saying, wow, you guys have amazing prices. Um, I went in the uh, big conference room I kind of did a loop, came back to you guys because I knew I could get a little bit cheaper. Yep. But we heard that a lot. And he has good presentation. This was some more higher price stuff that we have here on the image. For those of you listening on audio, uh, there's some good stuff in here. I know that the Ninja Turtle NES game got looked at so many times, and so did the Hyperstone Heist for Genesis. Those yeah. got picked up so many times, but they're pricey but because they're, they're rare items. These are more oh, of yeah. his you know, high dollar ones. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for those watching, um, 
some of those games on there, you're thinking, oh, it's not that much. Well, it might be the last of the series or a special edition. One thing that drew my attention was the uh, NCAA, NCAA football. It's like, uh, you know, it was over 100 bucks. But yeah. Brian tells me that is the last NCAA football game made by EA Sports. So, of yep. course, it's going to be really rare. It's a holy grail one. It is. It's because it yep. is the last run of those. And it's just funny because sports games are kind of shovelware because they come out every year. But when you have something like that where it ends, that's a, that's a great point. That's why you yeah. see some of the prices on some of these. And, uh, of course, Switch games were – he had more this year. We I remember people would come up and ask for Switch games last year, and we yeah. didn't have a ton. He had plenty, and they went. I mean – Yeah, you're looking at that now. I didn't get a finished photo, but uh, they – that was cleared out, you know. Yeah. Uh, we, did we had a to keep – job. We kept refilling. So yep. he had under the table bins, which you'll see here in a little bit, of overstock. And what the cool thing is, as – things started to dwindle doug and i were able to just you know and brian would hand us so we just kept filling filling and it's funny because some people walk by and go well you guys haven't sold much <laughs> no, no we did no, we've refilled it we yeah. just keep re he has no it's just Absolutely. he has that much in his collection so i do have a video here uh this is early walkthrough at the very beginning um we hadn't gotten started yet so even the vips hadn't got to it but i want to give you a sense of the floor plan what was cool this year at the very beginning they had arcades some good ones too. Did you? You didn't play any of them, did you? No, they were pretty busy, but uh, I, there were some really good hits. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Tapper. Tapper was there, mm -hmm. Tetris, uh, Simpsons. Simpsons. Mm -hmm. The Simpsons, I love that. Journey one. game, Pac Man. Pretty, yeah, um, they had a pinball in the main it's, hall. Yeah, I think I got some footage of that, and I believe, and you can see our booth there. We're yeah. finalizing, getting set up there. Um, I believe I, t I took a stroll into the main hall. Either that or I just mainly got our booth just so that we could see our setup. And it may be a little bit jittery on the share there, but we have the audio off. And you can see there all the consoles, living color. He had the, the Sega CD. What was so cool on the Sega CDs, he put Sewer Shark in, which if you know Sega CD originally, the Sewer Shark is what one of the original releases. So he actually put that in there to be That's faithful. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah. Sold a lot of consoles that day. Yeah, most of this is footage of the booth. So it was... How would you say about the crowd? Would you say it was steady state? You know, it, yeah, I, think I think it was years a consistent prior. Form. We had everybody at once. This today, it was more spread out, but we were still pretty busy. Yeah. And you know, Nork's talking. Uh, Doug and I, we had a video that we put together where we were chatting. We were testing out these microphones we got. I want to say uh, the audio quality wasn't great. I think it's because we weren't wearing them right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and uh, everybody watching, yes, I stabbed myself in the neck. I've <laughs> obviously never had a professional interview before. So. Well, a lot of people take the 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 lapel. Well, look at me; I'm holding my thumb over the camera. Well, I'm I mean, doing like a, a th I'm uh, tactical like uh, throat uh, <laughs> mic. There we go. I know. It, well, and uh, hold it up. Usually, a lot of people just hold it up, and that's probably what we should have done. But the audio quality wasn't very good at all. <laughs> yeah, so, well, we won't we won't go through that. But here's here's the venue space, and people started filling early on. You can get a sense yeah. of how many people were there. So he's right; we wasn't we weren't slammed all the time. But I think yeah. it's because it was better organized. It flowed better than it has in the past, um, and they used more of the conference spacing in a wiser way like the, like doug said the people were able to go play arcades there were panels uh, there were competitions weren't there for mario kart and a few other things yeah you're looking at the stage right now so the stage is where they had the tournaments before mm -hmm. uh, that guy got a great spot you know whoever <laughs> that merchant was he did he really um, really did they had a dj last year you couldn't really hear him at all kind of noisy was a good thought yeah um they in, had in the, the space is noisy and correct me if I'm wrong, the Sega prototype guy was there last year as well. Yeah, he had a booth. Adam, Adam, Adam Korlick. Mm -hmm. okay, he was there last year. So yep. He was there. They tried to have a celebrity YouTuber, somebody who has some notoriety as well, which is really cool that they do that. And Adam was one of them last year. He had been there the year before. So mm -hmm. he's had uh, um, a few people, which we'll talk about the celebrities here in a few moments, because Doug and I wanted to connect out with the celebrities this year, each year, because we, you know, we're fans of a lot of these people that do these things. Uh, and we want to share that passion with them. And sometimes they're just so busy. Uh, for example, the Mortal Kombat artist guy was back uh, this year. And he's the one that designed the dragon yep. logo. Paul Niemeyer, I believe. There he is. Yeah. And we, Now, I yeah. saw him later in the day. We saw that Tapper uh, arcade. He yeah. designed the graphics for Tapper as well. Yep, he's a. Uh, actually, there he is, right there. You see him. Yeah. 
And you say all his artwork on the table? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Selling his artwork. Nice guy. He's just busy and people are crowding around. Super so when you're, yeah. when you're a celebrity like that, you've got a lot of people crowding around you and it's really, really difficult to try to get the attention and get in front of them and say, Oh, by the way, we have a podcast, you know, we'd love to have you on. Uh, and so we've tried to do that with him and, and a few others and it just didn't, it, it's really hard to do, but this year I think we had pretty good luck, but we'll get into that here in a moment. This let's explain, yeah. let's talk about this. What's on the screen. So for the so, audio listeners, let's break it down of, we first saw this guy building this. What is yeah. this? I, I thought they were going to do showers. So I'll explain the picture for <laughs> those ahead. not uh, viewing right now. It is an essentially uh, three or four little poles uh, connected outward with shower curtains on them. So what it is is a what I call a don't look at my screen device. You know, uh, they're playing in sixty four. They're playing Goldeneye, and you got these t- kids on opposite sides of the shower curtain. There's two other kids on the other side of the shower curtain. So it's four little uh, booths there, mm-hmm. and they're all playing uh, four player uh, Goldeneye against each other. It's a really great idea. But it's a great idea. You know, yeah. we we came in early, we set up our booth, mm-hmm. and this guy's over here building this contraption, and none of us know what it is. You know, wires and poles, and he's using a power drill. He and looked on it for a while. Curtains <laughs> come out, but then it finally comes together, and I thought, that is genius. It's a cool idea. And I, I ended up, I walked over to him, because we were like, what is that? What is, and I was like, yeah. I got to ask you, bro, what is this? He's like, oh, it's for Goldeneye in 64, privacy, so you can't cheat. And I'm like, uh when I heard the uh, organizers of the event come to him later and thank him, I think he was just there mm-hmm. to uh, have a Pro- little uh, provide an experience. Area. Yeah, that's cool. In sixty four uh, golden Eye experience. So I thought we should have all went over there. <laughs> Flappers only. Odd job. Shout out to uh, Joe, my buddy, and Matt. Uh, that is the Dominated. most fun I've ever had. Well, that's that's really cool that he did it, and it was noisy. A lot of people were having fun and. Oh, and on when they, you know, kill each other. And oh, yeah, it was a cool idea. This was right next to our booth. So we got to witness the fun that people were having. It with was this. really good. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Look at that handsome devil on the screen. Oh, right there. yeah. So uh, I'm wearing my little name tag again. I got lots of comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, this is my buddy, uh, David, right across from me. We're making a transaction there. Uh, Wheeling really good time. Lots <laughs> of people I knew. Lots of people I didn't. And then uh, some celebrities uh, here in a little bit. Yeah. Or, celebrities in their own right you know not exactly big time but exactly and i will say what i love about this conference well it's close to home that's nice uh, so you don't we don't have to travel far but i love about it, it has the same feel of comic con in that the people that come here are all sharing in something that they love they're all really nice i also love that i learned something new and maybe I said this the last time we covered it, but people share with me stuff that I didn't know about video games or movies. And as you know, that's what we do on this podcast. We talk about all this stuff in geek culture with yeah. video games and um, movies. And, you know, for example, there's somebody who was flipping to the booth and this wife said to her husband, hey, you know, I, I believe that I think they were husband and wife and maybe their boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm not sure. Uh, they could be brother and sister. I don't know. Yeah. But they <laughs> but they were like, hey, there's a Borderlands movie coming out. Of course, Doug and I had talked about that and they were like yeah. trying to remember who the stars were. And I I poked. I was like, Kevin Hart's in it. Jack Black is <laughs> in the robot, you know. And so we kind of started to have this whole conversation about it. And I love sharing that. And I always learn something new. And it's really cool, too, because people it tests your knowledge of what you do and don't know about video games. Because there's a lot and people come up and be like, hey, I'm looking for X, Y, Z. And you're like, OK, I remember NBA Jam did come out for this, that. Or that. And it yeah. really stretches you. Or we get out our phones and we search. And it's it's cool, man, because I always learn something new. Oh, yeah, I like it. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, these events like this and uh, Kansas City Comic Con, this is a time for people to come out of their shell. People to wear all the shirts, wear all the hats. Uh, there wasn't really any cosplay here but you definitely saw people representing with their shirts hats oh. uh, a lot of really cool tattoos i think i saw <laughs> some uh, uh paul neymar has a uh a mortal Kombat tattoo on his arm that was really cool mm-hmm. a couple other guys had uh zelda and some other stuff i probably don't recognize now this photo here i'm glad you jumped to it <laughs> yep this is our first encounter with a celebrity mr <laughs> right way uh, he's on uh, YouTube. He's got over 35,000 followers, pretty big. Uh, and man, did he spend a lot of time in our booth and I'll kind of let you take over there. He did. And what I'm going to do, eh, just so people have a 
frame of reference is take a look at. So for the guest speakers, they had Mr. Rightway, who is a YouTuber. I mean, he's he's awesome. Huge yeah. fan. He has great uh, content about collecting. And then, of course, Neo Ness, who's just getting yeah. underway, getting going and growing. And uh, these guys were the greatest. We didn't think we would ever be able to really talk to them at the very beginning of the show before it started. Doug and I were able to like at least give them the cards. We asked them some tips so just about, uh, you know, their YouTubing and, you know, stuff like that. And they were really kind. But yeah. then both of these guys, especially Mr. White, they had panels to do. And in fact, if oh, I <laughs> if I flip back uh, to this other photo, I believe it was it was close to around the same time that he we noticed he had came to visit Brian. Yeah. And of course, he's a he's a collector and he was looking at Brian's collection. And I think it was just before, like they had made an announcement that he had to go to his panel in five minutes. And I think at one point I was like, didn't they just make an announcement for you? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But he was, he is like, he yeah. knows his stuff. Oh, he yeah. loved, he, I don't know, just his passion just came through about looking through Brian's stuff. And uh, so they spent a lot of time in our booth and we got to visit with him and they were amazing guys. Oh yeah. Well, I think at one point he's like, you guys have an amazing booth. And uh, Brian really took that uh, to heart, you know, uh, this is his passion. He uh, it's working pretty hard on it. Yeah, I'm gonna flip through. You can see Neo Ness and Mr. Rightway. There was a bin we had behind us that it's all the overstock uh, because they were asking. Uh, like, I think Neo and Ness. He was like, "Hey, do you guys have any like first gen Xbox?" Well, we didn't put any of that out. Like, but it was in a bin, layers of it. So we were just like, "Come on back here," and they were. And I'm glad. That's when we. I'm glad we had the extra space. They spent a lot of time with us. And there was oh, another yeah. gentleman, and I apologize. I, I know. I wish I would have caught his name. He was great, too. But I think they are uh, maybe mentoring him and bringing yeah. him up to do the same thing as well. The, the magnets they had, it was Retro Bros, if you remember yeah. correctly. So check out their podcast. There he is. Check out their podcast. They were some of the kindest, most humblest, nicest dudes I have ever met. And yes. they knew their stuff and they were, they were awesome. I, they were my favorite part of the con, just being able to sit oh, and visit yeah. with them and, and learn from them and just hear them, you know, pick out what they were looking for, for their collection to round them out. And so being a fan and then being able to be around them. So we are hoping and praying that we'll be able to get in touch with them. We exchanged information, gave them our contact. We would love, love to have Mr. Rightway and Eunice on the podcast. And Absolutely. I think that would be a blast. And I think that would be a very, very good conversation. Lots of good stuff to talk about. Oh, yeah, definitely. They, they were great. So that yeah. that was a surprise is being able to spend time with them and learn from them and just realize what great guys they were. So I appreciate them. They're going to check this out. Hopefully, uh, guys, thank you so much for spending time with us. You you all yeah. were so much fun. You made the con really awesome for me and Doug. And I know you helped Brian, too. You made the con awesome. For too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the trades. Yeah, oh you know, he uh, <laughs> would find something interesting at Brian's uh, booth here, and then he'd say, okay, i got to be back. And he'd go back, and he'd come back with a The most tub, amazing stuff. Yeah. Like a tub you put in the attic full of stuff. And it wasn't back. junk. It wasn't no, shovelware. It was decent no, stuff. No. It, it was, was decent good stuff. stuff. And yeah. Brian's like, oh, man, I got some good stuff here. Yeah, they wheeled and dealed. So yeah. it was it was really, really cool. There we are chilling. We did have a few moments of downtime that which we I can say we didn't have in the past. Again, I attribute that to the way it flowed and, and everything. Yeah. Uh, there were two other things going on in the city at the time, too. There was a comic book convention and then a 420 convention downtown. 420 as in smoke it up. <laughs> yeah, you know. But what better to uh, get you some games and then come smoke, right? Yeah. So <laughs> this next, uh, uh, I found some stuff. You know, we always ask... Uh, did Doug find anything at the Comic-Con or uh, anything at the RetroCon? So I found this Mortal Kombat pin. Really nice. I got the uh, animation there from old Snapchat. Appreciate that. So. <laughs> yeah, they were cool little pins. I told Doug, I I don't collect them. I'm kind of starting to. But what I do is I put them on a, a travel satchel bag that I have. Just because it's kind of nice. It's, it's subdued and they're small. And I'll go back. I had a picture of my bag so you can see the ones... Um, yeah, that. I'm kind of jealous of this uh, Rockstar pin. And then you had a Doom on a floppy disk, not a save icon for those young kids out there. Yeah, I and already... An actual 3.5. Yeah. <laughs> it's a save icon. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> now, I already had the... So the Yoda one I had gotten at Comic-Con a couple years ago. Very and that's... Nice. Well, it's, Yo, it's Grogu, excuse me. 
Leah would yell at me. If she, uh -oh. <laughs> it's Grogu. And then I had gotten for Christmas or birthday a PlayStation one because it looks very nice. But then I added good old Dougie Doug surprised me. I got a birthday coming up. He got me the Doom yeah. one here yeah. at this convention. And it's the, the save icon. And I bought for myself the Rockstar icon, you know, in honor of GTA coming out. So, you know, they nice. weren't very much money, but they're pretty well built. Uh, they're metal. They're yeah. a really good color. Yeah. Yeah, And I love about it because this bag here is a canvas bag. It's very thick. And there's no decoration. I've had this bag forever. And this is my travel bag when I travel for work. I mean, it's got all my tech in it. And I love just putting pens on it. And my goal is just to put pens all the way around the flap yeah. and just kind of do my own decoration with it. And uh, those pens are pretty inexpensive. And they have them at like Comic Con. But I will dare say I saw the best selection at this convention of these. They had a lot to choose from. Yep. Yeah. So now one guy said he uh, had a bunch of fallout pins. I was super excited, but he left them back at his shop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But now you're on the hunt, though. Oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was, it was, it was, that was where our pickups, not, not big items, but yeah. So while I'm on fallout, let me get my hand right. So right above my hand, if you're watching the video, I have a new Pip boy Ooh. coffee mug. Yeah. Now I uh, don't want to drink out of it necessarily. I don't want to damage any pain or anything. I don't know if that'll do it, but a uh, no, nice addition to my uh, shelf here, kind of right above my hand behind me. So Yeah, that was a thank you from Brian for helping out yes. working in the booth. And I just want to say thanks to Brian. You know, I uh, don't need a gift, uh, but I really <laughs> appreciate it. I go merely to what I told Keith three years ago, get some nerd credit. I just love hanging out. I love talking to the people, talking about video games, movies, all that good stuff. So it's just a great experience for me. So I thank you, Brian, and thank you, Keith, for invite me along no man it's a good time I, I had a good time this year i i think it was contributed to brian having it down to a science of the booth oh, layout um well he calm. said a lot of things of i saved you guys some time this year oh so, he did yeah. like tremendous amount of time um you're looking at those wooden bins they are oh, so heavy oh yeah. my god and he made those yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, he made very well, and he got some compliments on his displays. Yeah, if somebody they were asking where did he get those displays, and he's like, "Well, I, I made, made them." them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that brings me to the end of the. And if you here's there's the displays that they were asking about, and yeah. they are hard to find. You know, things like this. so he just made his own because he's very handy with that. But so yeah, man. I mean, it, it was a great convention overall. Now let's talk about the future. We were able to have a conversation um, with. The was it the mom of Sumner? I yeah, believe, right? Sumner's mother, Miss Henry, I guess. Yes, yeah. and actually, she's right here. There she is. That people kind of walking through, inspecting things. In yeah, that photo. Nice lady. And that's uh, his father as well behind us. No, oh, yep, yeah, that's With right. With the Mizzou shirt on. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and so Sumner's going to flight school, and he's graduating high school this May. So the question is, what's going to happen to the con? She expressed to us that well, he's going to go to flight school. He's still trying to you know, get future figured out. But to his point, he runs the coordination of most of this. We're talking 90% of it is online. Oh, yeah. And so he'll probably continue it. But it's very clear to see that this venue is slowly becoming a bit much like or not enough. They're, they're, it, this is growing to become a bit much for the venue. And so they're looking for other places that are maybe are larger and expanding. So that's exciting. We'll see if that continues. Yeah, uh, he has a Facebook page where all the vendors can kind of sign up and you can get tickets as an attendee. But uh, I realized one thing is uh, I believe he had more vendors than he had space for because there were several messages that came out of, that said, hey, this vendor didn't make it. Uh, we can get you in, stuff like oh, that. Oh, really? Okay. So I think if we, or if Sumner, actually, since he's the organizer, if he can get us into a bigger venue, I think he'll have no problem uh, filling it up. I think so as well. I, I loved, and you walking through with playing that video, what's really cool this year, there were more game-related craft things like we see at Comic-Con. Did you notice that? I did. Like, a lot of homemade yeah. goods. Um, those, um, I, I'm going to say it wrong, the melty things that you used to do. Look, in, it's uh, like pixel art, but you do it with yeah. the, the melted beads. Yeah, I saw yeah. those. Um, Keychains. Uh, 3D yep. printing. The, actually, I don't know if I can pause it. You can kind of see back on this uh, table over here. 
if I can kind of, I don't even, I, I might actually go by it. Let's see if I can catch it. Uh, there's a friend of mine that I know. I used to work in IT. His name is Chris. He's right, right there. He's at that back table on his phone. You can see over the, yeah. over the shoulder there. He has 3D printed. You know what he, he, his booth, and I was talking to him. It's pretty cool. Uh, he's, he's getting into his own business of doing 3D printing clamshells for retro consoles for like the Game Boy SP, but he's making, they're all of his own design. They're not off the internet. And That's he 3D cool. CADs them and he prints them. And what he was showing there was he had printed uh, Pokemon. And so it's really cool for like people who are doing upstart businesses like that as well to promote their wares. And so he's going to start selling it. What he, he's going to have, he only had one example, uh, but he's going to, his goal is next year, once he ramps up production, have a whole variety of shells. And then you can have somebody like Brian who knows how to do it. Buy the shell. If you don't want to do the work yourself, you can transplant the guts uh, from your old console into his new 3d printed ones or he said he'll even do custom design for you yeah. you know so it just that's such a cool booth you know you can see there's a few blank vendors there that didn't show up but yet man it was busy it was constant yeah. so looking at the map i'll kind of go real quick uh you had old uh old gamer magazine uh we've seen that guy multiple times a uh, bunch of personal names and then uh, Niemeyer and all kinds of uh, different vendors there. Yeah. Many of them, some of them have shops. Uh, the one guy we talked yeah. to that we had bought the pins from uh, was out of like near St. Louis, Missouri, like around Washington. And many of them, they just take a portion of their inventory and they, they bring it. And, you know, they they actually have a storefront. And I, I think that's cool that they do that. Some are private collectors as well. You know, a lot of Funko Pops and, and things like that. But, you know, I think that's the advantage that perhaps Brian might have is that since he doesn't have the overhead of, you know, a full blown rent with having to have uh, staff to run it. I think that's why he's able to, you know, price things and do it the way that he does. And it gives him a big advantage. And the thing is, the first year was kind of a mistake. We're at the very front entrance here. This is when you first bought. we're the first ones people see. That was a mistake year one. We weren't supposed to be there. And we we he's kept that spot because what we found is people hit us up usually first thing and then and last. Well, and they do, because what the what Brian and I know is they'll walk through in the peruse and they go in there and then they'll come back out because it's kind of like a second thought. Of, well, maybe I'll take it. I'll just go ahead and look again. Uh, so it was it was great. And when I think he was one of the few vendors that took credit card and Apple Pay. And I mean, I'm not saying that others probably didn't, but many attendees reported that they thought it was cash like most places were cash only and then they were shocked to find out that we did more than that so i do think that that helps too yep definitely so it, it was it was a good show i think it was probably one of the better ones in way of mm -hmm. um just the way they ran it um had a blast uh, meeting mr right way and neo ness i'm looking forward to hopefully catching up with them and i don't know man my impressions was all positive i'm exhausted today i just gotta be honest with you like us lifting those boxes and being on our feet all day and things like that. Like I am beat. <laughs> I'm not used to that. I'm a desk. I'm a desk jockey. I'm not, I'm not used to all this. You're used to standing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the standing didn't bother me. It's kind of like, not that I thought real hard, but the kind of mental uh, uh, draining from talking to people and bringing up the cash register, answering questions, cards. making change. Yeah. Yeah. I hear and you. And they kept us busy for the most part. Like I said, they did. in the past, I think, uh, we had some heavy, heavy traffic and then nothing. Mm -hmm. to yesterday this was steady. Was, uh, yes, very steady. And we had a few moments where we could chill and walk through, uh, which was nice. So I don't know. I, I thought it was, it was nice. I'll dare say, after our Comic Con experience we had this year, with that being so busy and disappointment, I had to say it, just because it wasn't well organized, it was kind of refreshing to do this this year and have it go so well, be refreshing. It was fun, you know, yeah, whereas Comic-Con wasn't you know, not, not trying to knock Kansas city. Yeah. But Comic -Con, such but... a huge organization and I'm sure millions of dollars, uh, they, uh, dropped the ball big time. So. Yeah. This was so much better. I had a bit personally, I had a bit ex better experience here. Yeah. Um, and kudos to the Henry's for putting this on. I hope it continues. Um, I'm pretty sure if Sumner can't, Brian would probably want to put it on. And then you and I would really have to be buried because we would be exhausted. <laughs> well, I'd hope we would transition from working a booth to just kind of making sure everything's flowing good. Yeah, Brian would want to do both. Yeah. Well, he's on his own. And <laughs> he's on his own. 
<laughs> no, it's fun. It's it, it is. Yeah. It, it's great. It was a really good time. So yeah, overall, my impression had a great time. If they do this yearly, hopefully they'll have it again next year. Uh, it's what's really cool is all ages, ethnicities. Uh, I just it was wonderful to see the melting pot of people that kids that would come and 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 were experiencing things. So it's really good to like bring your family to if you're into video games, especially yeah. old ones. And they had uh, stations set up so you can actually play games. Um, it, it's just it's a great experience. And so I highly encourage that uh, if you're in the area or want to travel, I mean, shoot, Mr. White right way. He came from Dallas, so he yeah. really did travel. Uh, people from St. Louis, uh, Kansas City. There was some people I knew that had come all the way from um, Iowa, you know, Wyoming. I talked to one person that was from Colorado. So, so people that actually traveled, it's starting to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing I'll throw out there for those wanting to travel is uh, Columbia Regional Airport, direct flights from Dallas and Chicago. So yep. uh, we have flights directly to uh, the area that you're going to be at. So, And this place, at least for the venue this year, uh, there was one guy that came through. And he was just floored. He was at the beginning of the show. It hadn't opened yet. And he was on the phone with his son. He was in Columbia on business, staying at this place at the Stony Creek oh, Inn. Yeah. And the hotel. He didn't even know it was happening. He came know. downstairs for breakfast, he said. And he didn't know this was going on. And he was walking through it. And his son is a huge gamer. And so he was pick, he was buying stuff from us for his son. He's like, oh, my God. I wish I would have brought him with me on this trip. And he could have just hung out here while I. So, yeah, and he had traveled from he far away. He actually bought a couple things. He did. Uh, yeah, he was Some with his son and... on the phone. And, yeah, uh, FaceTime. A couple things from us. Yeah, that's funny. We saw that quite a bit. We whether it was uh, girlfriends and boyfriends or moms and dads and brothers and sisters, they would FaceTime and then they would like hold up. Is this the controller you want? Is this the game you want? That happens so many times. Uh, mm -hmm. Or a lot of collectors would contact their significant other and be like, "Hey." Do I have XYZ in the collection? Can you look on the shelf? Because they couldn't remember. Maybe they didn't have it you know, in their inventory. It was, yeah. it was really cool about how they were. everybody was working together uh, to, to have a good experience with it. So it was kind of neat. And you're oh, right. Yeah. The shirts were awesome. We, had, we saw some of the coolest shirts. <laughs> hey, we were, I was rocking my new baseball tee there. You were. You were. I, don't... I mean, uh, a couple tacos later, it's a little tight, but it's okay. <laughs> a couple tacos later. <laughs> So yeah, man, it, I had a great experience. Uh, special thank you to to Brian for inviting yes. us as always. Uh, it is a lot of work, but this one is fun. I had a really good time this year. Awesome. Thank you to the Henrys for putting it on. Hopefully it'll happen again next year uh, and we'll be able to be there in some capacity one way or the yeah. other. Um, and uh, huge thanks to Mr. Rightway and Neo Ness and his friend for spending time with us. And otherwise we had a, that's what we want to report. We had a great time. You all should check it out. Yeah. I don't know how I can close after such a great uh, thing like that. So I'll just say uh, like, subscribe, keep checking us out. We've got those retro reviews on there, uh, a couple fallout things, uh, one, two, tactics, and number three. Yep. So uh, definitely look us up. We're going to try to get some uh, interviews for you soon. Yep. Lots of great content. Uh, we may take a little break over the summer, but we're still working that out. So. That's right. We try to be consistent. I'm glad you brought that up, Doug, because we've talked about this. Looking at the calendar, you know, we have a lot of people get busy. We're always going to, even if we don't do a full on post, especially May is going to get early kludgy for us. Uh, if we don't post a full blown episode, we are going to do our best to continue with doing some of our retro game reviews. Uh, so there's always content that you can consume on a weekly basis in some form or, a, or another, uh, because we appreciate you all. We appreciate the feedback. We love the community that we're building here and we want to keep that up. And so we don't want to leave you hanging for too long. So even yeah. if we don't have a full blown podcast in may we're going to always have something out there to some extent or maybe we'll do a warp episode we'll do a little quick touch bases uh, yeah. but it's going really well i'm having a blast and that's the most important thing and i know doug is too so. absolutely yep all right i think that rounds out episode number 13 we will be back i believe we'll be back next week uh and we will have our normal formatting uh, with the nerd news and then our centralized topic uh, from there, I know Doug is working on cooking up some interviews, some more yep. things that we're going to have people on. And then, of course, we always have our merch store that you can check out if you like. If you thought that baseball tee is very uh, comfortable. I was going to say Doug wore it all day. He was he was stretching and moving and he was loving it. So yeah, yeah. He's, he's our he's our new male model. So I don't know about that, but <laughs> wait, wrong more song. like a Chris Farley at uh, Chippendales. <laughs> oh, OK. A fat guy and a baseball tee. <laughs> hey, yo. All, All right, right, everyone. You have a great week. We will talk to you soon. Take care. See ya.
Bye.